Arfield. What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's a Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Patella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Patella. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Patella's day. And Burnley are three. And he's won the outside, comes inside, comes up, he's shot, oh, what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class, Burnley have done it, fantastic, Clarence deserve the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. <laughs> Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to another instalment of the Turfcast podcast. Pre-game show with me, Joe Redmond, ahead of this weekend's game against Preston North End at Turf Moor. A Lancashire derby, obviously a derby that doesn't really sit at the front of the importance these days due to the fact that they, you know, have, I'm going to say reignited the rival with Blackburn. Obviously it never subsided, but for those clarets of a certain age, we didn't play Blackburn for so long that Preston was all that we had to make do with. And I quite enjoyed some of the battles down the years. Um, some of the younger ones may not remember them. And speaking of younger ones, as you can see, uh, Jack is considerably younger than me. So we will get into the the sort of like Preston-Burnley rivalry and how it feels to sort of different generations, I think. Uh, but I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Jack from the Butter Pie Pod, which is, of course, a Preston North End podcast. How are you doing, mate? Um, I'm, I'm great, mate. Thank you for having me on. So it's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming on, mate. Obviously, we're recording this Thursday morning. I was messaging. I didn't realise, when I was trying to organise this, I didn't realise you played on Wednesday night. Obviously, we played on Tuesday. I'm thinking in my head, perfect. We'll do the recording on Wednesday night. But obviously, Preston fans couldn't do it because they were playing on Wednesday night. Um, and obviously, Jack, second win of the season yesterday against Watford. A, a, a decent win. A 3-0 battering of Watford. Admittedly, Watford are hit and miss this season, but they started the season very well, whereas obviously you started it quite poorly, so you must be happy about last night. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, st we're still trying to find our footing under Paul Heckenbottom. He's still trying to assist this team out, so that win last night, you know, I mean, two goals were scored by his manager, who I'm sure we'll talk about, and Ali McCann. Yeah. You know, we're seeing some of the players who we're starting to see some of the players who are going to thrive under Heckenbottom, but we're still trying to find that footing of who is who is clearly not suitable to be at the club and who, who are. And that win last night really, really showed about what we can do. It's just whether yeah. we can get that uh, momentum going. But obviously, it's the international break soon. So as soon as we start getting the momentum going, it's going to be like stopped right there. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's really, really good. It, three 0 win against a who should be a who should be a top team, but um, yeah, second win of the season. You can't really complain. Yeah, and to be fair, I'm just looking at your results for the season. I've I've already nailed my colours to the to the mass. You've had a poor start. Obviously, the league table doesn't lie. It looks a little bit, little bit, little bit better. Sorry, after last night climbing out of the relegation zone, but it is only your second win of the season. The teams below you are just Cardiff, Portsmouth, and QPR. Surprisingly, um, a lot of people tipping QPR to do okay this year, but they seem to be down there. Uh, and Plymouth, obviously just the one point above you at the minute, but they're quite a wheel. So there, it's getting tight, but you are obviously down there at the minute. Um, what are sort of like your thoughts on the season so far then, mate? Because just looking at some of your results, obviously started off with a defeat against Sheffield United, fair enough. Um, and uh, a, a poor defeat at Swansea, but then a good win against Luton Town, who admittedly have ended up being quite poor. Uh, but then a bad defeat at Oxford, uh, a, decent, a decent draw at Middlesbrough. This is what I mean, like you are down there, but there's some results in there that are decent. So 
Is it yeah. a little bit hit and miss your season, or has it been poor? Like, how, how do Preston fans view it? Wildly inconsistent, honestly. It's been one of those... I Personally, for me, I'm not sure how every North End fan feels, but I can get the general consensus that this season's kind of bit of a write-off anyway, because we, we lost our manager first game into this season. It was always going to take a bit of time for Heckenbottom to settle in, implement his philosophy, whatever that may be, and yeah. uh, you know his style of play and his sort of authority on the team. But the thing is, he's come into an absolute sinking ship of a of a situation. And uh, to be fair, he's trying he, he's trying his best to stabilise it, and he is getting some decent results and some decent performances out of some players. But there's still some players that a lot of North End fans are just like, yeah, I don't think you're going to be here next season for sure. You will not be here for sure. Yeah. And yeah, but um, a lot of, I think a lot of the fans are not really expecting much for this season. I mean, uh, on our podcast, we're not really particularly infused. We're, we're, we're pretty much saying it's going to be middle of the park. You know, we'll, we'll probably be about 12 around that region. Because I think the form will pick up again. But um, it's just all about just seeing this season out and just seeing what foundations we can build on for next season. Yeah, fair enough. It's interesting as well. So what, what are your ambitions then as a fan base for the season? Is it is it finishing mid-table? Like you said, like you're not particularly enthused. But what are the actual sort of like aims for the season is is it just staying up or 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 do you want to try and potentially push the playoffs or, or do you think that's a little bit little bit too much because you weren't a million miles away last season if i remember rightly weren't you kind of flirting with never really in the conversation yeah we kind of do that thing of uh, most seasons where we put a good run together it gets to about april we'll be a few points off and everyone's saying oh it's it's they're an outside shout hey that, that I put my money on them. I don't know why you would waste the money because <laughs> next thing you know, we'd be playing the likes of um, like oh Plymouth. No disrespect to these teams, but like Plymouth and like Coventry. He's we seem to pick up points against Coventry quite a lot. Yeah, and it gets to about April, and then you might as well be playing Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, putting this hard run together, and we just just fall off and. Uh, the, uh, the potential for the playoffs is like gone, basically. Uh, yeah, but no, but this season, though, it's for me per- personally and Oliver on the podcast as well, it, it's all about just, just keeping ourselves in this league, getting a respectable finish and just looking at what we can build on because I think the playoffs are far too fetched, especially with this group of players. And yeah. uh, but um, no, but the but you know, again, never say never, you never know what happens in football. But like with Preston, it's kind of predictable how our season could go, like he's gonna go. And uh, I think we'll probably be respectable mid table come end of the season, we'll we'll stay up com- quite comfortably. Um, um, but yeah, no, uh. A lot of the North End fans are not particularly looking at the playoffs. It's just more about just keep us in the division, just get yeah. a respectable finish. Let's yeah. just build on it for next season. Everyone's pretty much focused for that next season. Yeah, fair enough. It's interesting because I never had Preston as, as one of the teams that I thought would be in trouble at the start of the season, but a couple of lads on the podcast did. And then I've seen... Oxford get off to a good start. I've seen Plymouth pick up some decent results. And I do start to worry for you, not that I'm losing any sleep over Preston, but like start to think, or oh, maybe Preston can get dragged into it. Um, but I think I think the, the the result, just looking at some of your results, like you said, it's inconsistent. You've you've got a draw at Middlesbrough. Not many teams will go there and get a draw this year. You've just thrashed Watford. You've beaten Luton, who admittedly have been a little bit poor. Um, but I, I think... I think you'll be okay. I, th- I think the form of Oxford should worry you, though, because um, that were one of the teams that I think a lot of people had down there. But I still think Derby will go. Um, QPR don't look great. Um, so it's going to be interest- an interesting battle down there. But I think you're probably right. I think I think, I think ultimately you'll, you'll pull away. And I think one of the reasons you'll pull away is Paul Eckenbottom. Now, I quite like Paul Eckenbottom. I think he's a good manager, obviously, promoted to the Premier League with Sheffield United recently. Uh, didn't do too well with them there, admittedly, but was promoted uh, to the Premier League with them. I actually used to some of the people who watch the podcast will know i used to work as a journalist for a local radio station 
over in Leeds when he was a Leeds United manager. I actually know him quite well. Well, I don't speak to him or anything anymore, but I knew him quite well back then. Uh, and I, I quite like him. He's a nice guy. He's quite open. Um, if he's in a mood, he'll tell you he's in a mood. And if he's happy, you know, he, he's more than happy to talk to anyone. I quite like him. What are your thoughts on him as a manager so far? Do you think it's a little bit too early to sort of like say? The thing is, I, I really like the way he conducts himself. I think it's a real breath of fresh air because we had Ryan Lowe, who was a bit erratic, to say the least. He just sort of had this tendency just tendency just to make it all about him in a way, just to sort of say yeah. something or he'll make some or something will happen and all eyes are on him. Again, it, it might be a good distraction for the players, but... Y y Every week I was hearing something about something going on behind the scenes. Oh, this player doesn't like Lowe. Lowe doesn't like this particular player. With Paul Heckerbottom, I've heard none of that. He seems to have a good grip on the team and he conducts himself very well in interviews, like I said. And he's just an overall positive, quite a positive guy. And he's very straightforward, very honest. Yeah. If he doesn't like what he sees, he just says it. He doesn't care how it comes across or who he's hurting. He'll just say it, and that's something we've missed because I think a lot of, like, particularly on the Ryan Lowe, it was kind of sugar-coated a little bit. And um, and then, yeah, but he, he, just, he, he just... It just feels nice to have a manager that actually, like, cares about, like, sort of the progress of the team rather being, like... Ah, uh, like, um, like Paul Ackerbottom would be like, I, I, I think he was against uh, Oxford. Like, oh, was it Oxford? It was one of our recent losses. He was like, I just, I, I think he said, I, I saw some things I didn't really, really like. I don't yeah. really want to see. And Ryan Lowe would be, would have been like, uh, I have a style of play. I want them to play this style of play. I basically, you know, I, I'm just. Uh, you know, I want them to play the style of play. This is how they must play, and I will not give it up. And Paul Hackerbottom just seems to, he's a little bit more flexible, to say, it, which is nice. But yeah. uh, he's, a very, he's a very good manager. He's, he seems to be a very good man manager as well. He keep, he, he's getting a best out of a lot of the players that were kind of fringe players in a way, like Ali McCann and Ozmaic. But no, um, overall, I'm, I am quite optimistic for the future with Hacking bottom, and I think he will uh, be overall a um, a success, actually. But um, I'll uh, I'll have to uh, we'll have to wait. We'll have to, we'll have to let time tell um, about what happens in that regard. Yeah, fair enough. What about style of play? Has he been able to implement his own style of play yet, and and get that across to the players? What sort of style are you playing on the hacking bottom? With hacking bottom, he. See, the thing is, I remember when we played Blue and nothing was too dissimilar. Still belt out from the back, focusing on possession and using whip to create chances. And like, but one thing I noticed is like these wing backs are really pushing high up. Like Kane Kessler Hayden, wow, what a player he is, by the yeah. way. The way he would like create chances for Emil Reese to run into the channels. Again, not too dissimilar to how Lowe played. But the thing is, it seemed like there was a clear idea and a clear like route on how we were going to do these things and how we were we were a lot more structured defensively. And you know, it was we were kind of tough to break down against Luton. And if it wasn't I mean, obviously we conceded a lot of chances to Luton, but I not once did I feel like they were going to score. It was really weird. Um, yeah. And Freddie Woodman pulled off an absolute brilliant performance. Like some of the saves he made were brilliant. But um, but yeah, nothing's. I, mean, I think it's really nice to see that nothing's drastically changed in terms of the style. But you could see that he wants to go a little bit more beyond. He wants us to be a little bit more um, aggressive a lot more like in control of games and we saw that yeah. last night and uh that was a really obviously a really good win and a really good springboard to go from uh but uh yeah he see so yeah, 
I feel like we're starting to see that Paul Heckenbottom sort of style of play come to fruition a little bit. But obviously, I don't think it's going to be 100 percent perfect until he gets his players on what he get until he gets what he wants. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, just we need to go off for last night as a springboard about yeah, how we want to play and keep that momentum going. Yeah, definitely. Just just rewinding a little bit, you mentioned Ryan Law. Obviously, quite a few eyebrows raised when he was sacked after one game of the season. I mean, whether Preston fans wanted him sacked or not, I think one get after one game of the season is, is quite bizarre, isn't it? And you've just kind of alluded to the reason why there when you said it's Heckebottom can't really implement his style of play until he gets his players. Well, if 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 Ryan Law was so close to being sacked, why wasn't he just sacked at the end of the season? Then you bring Heckebottom in and then you have a have a summer. I presume you're shaking your head and stuff. I presume as Preston fans, you were quite frustrated with that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think I left a very bitter taste in my mouth. Yeah. Can uh, I, I mean, it... <sighs> I think if if Ryan Lowe had anything about him, he, he should he would have gone last season at the end of last season. And if he cared about the progress of the club, he should have just gone there and then. But the thing is, Ryan Lowe, so he says, doesn't give up. So um, I'd love to know where he got that sort of attitude from. One game, like where that actually went, one game into the season. But um, he should have just done the right thing and gone at the end of last season. I think for me. It was really weird. I f- see. The thing is, I, I I did really like Lowe at the start of his reign, but you could tell by the end of last season, everything he just sort of lost everything. The fans, the board. I don't think the board gave up on him, but like the fans and the players, you could just see that <laughs> nothing was. I don't think anyone was really backing him. Like the people who truly mattered, like the the, the players and the fans and. Yeah, it, it should have just happened last season, and then we should have got Paul Heckingbottom uh, at the end of last season. Just let him just build his team in his image. But you know, so but we've got to put up with this whole season now of just finding our footing and finding a foundation. And um, next season, should we be in this league or not? Use it as a uh, you know, just build on it and just. You know, just look to the future on the hiking bottom. But uh, yeah, but it's very frustrating. It's a very unique situation. Like, I remember when that news came out, I was like, "Can I? Can I just have one normal day, please?" Of Preston North End, <laughs> one normal day, because it just hit everything after another with that club. Honestly, yeah, it do, it does from the outside looking in. Sometimes look at the top; it's a little bit of a circus, and and some things are completely incorrect. Um, the, the, the Ryan Law sacking especially, whether it was the right decision or not, that's not particularly what I'm debating. It's just the fact that it was after um, one game yeah. of the season. Um, moving on, I've just had a notification from Alan Nixon because I'm one of them losers that has certain journalists on notifications. And he has said that Preston North End hope that Ozmaic only gets a four-game ban. Obviously, it was absolutely hilarious when he bit Owen Beck. Um, I probably wouldn't have thought it was hilarious if it was any any other team, uh, but the fact that it was a Blackburn player, I was laughing my cock off. Um, so, well done to him for that. Um, but uh, what's the latest situation with him? Because he's, he's accepted the ban, hasn't he? It's potentially yeah. a 10-game ban, but obviously I've just had a notification now saying that Preston hope it's only four-game. Is he going to be available this weekend or is he not? Like, what's the situation with him? Oh, I mean, just, I am, again, just just for full transparency, we're recording this on Thursday morning, so knowing our look, the news will come out Thursday afternoon that he's banned for three weeks. Already. Yeah, uh, that that is uh, extremely concerning. I mean, it was always going to come as well. It was always going to come. He was an. It was fun. It was funny from your perspective, but from a North End perspective, <laughs> it's like, why have you done this? Because yeah. you're an absolutely brilliant player. And you've just gone and thrown it all away because you decided you wanted Owen Beck's bloody neck fatigue. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like what I, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't tell you like the emotions I was going through when that happened. When that whole drama unfolded, but no, um, a lot of North End fans are very frustrated. They find it very funny. There's some humour in it, but uh, deep down they're like, "Oh God, what are we gonna do?" Our striker, who's scoring goals for fun right now, is gonna is gonna be gone for like, well, hopefully four games. But like, 
it it, it kind of says to me that there's quite a lengthy bank on him. Maybe yeah. four, maybe ten. I think. Um, again, is the bite as bad as like Luis Suarez is? Probably not. But at the end of the day, you bit someone. It's feral. You know, it's quite unusual behaviour. I think he goes yeah. without saying. But um, I think uh, he's set himself up for a pretty lengthy ban, and we've got to look to uh, cope without him. And he's coming into form, and it's very, very frustrating. But as my itch, um, yeah, I do hope for a four-game ban. But it, I think he's probably going to get longer. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But the, they've accepted the charge, and we'll probably hear the news either this afternoon, this evening, or probably Friday morning. And um, yeah. but the fact that he's been able to play these last two games is insane. I thought he would have been dealt with a lot quicker. But um, the FA, I don't know how they work. I don't think anyone really has a clue how they work. But um, yeah, but um, it's it's a pretty messy situation because um, we've now got to look to Reese, who's not been particularly great this season. I mean, especially in, in terms of goal scoring. But um, he offers a lot more. Uh, he offers a lot more tactically. But Osmaic is just a pure and bred goal scorer and uh that's something that we're going to be truly miss if he does end up getting a lengthy ban yeah interesting keep an eye out for that one then claret side definitely will be going to be interesting to see if he does get but i agree it's weird that he's played in the last two games but then i mean i, I mean you were glad he has if, if he scored twice last night against watford wasn't it so yeah, yeah but then frustrating that now he's, he's scored goals and he can't build on that momentum which he'll be just as frustrated about but he, it's his own fault at the end of the day isn't it to be fair no yeah exactly. um, I, I alluded to it at the start of the show. Obviously, Burnley and Preston is a bit of a rivalry. Obviously, we both have attentions and rivalries elsewhere, ourselves with the horse fiddlers, yourselves with the donkey lashes. They both like equines. Weird, weird lot, pair of them. Um, but obviously, I think when I was growing up, I'm, I'm 36 now. I uh, don't want to sound like, you know, certified uncle, as uh, as people as the new meme says. Um, but when I was growing up, we didn't play Blackburn very much, or if at all. I think we played them. Um, the first time we played them in my life was in 1999, 2000 season. I won't tell you what the scores were. Um, whereas we were playing Preston regularly, all the way up until like 2009, 10, when we went up. Obviously, we were only in the Premier League for one year. And then we come back down and, and played you quite a lot again. So I ended up developing not a hatred, but sort of like quite a dislike for Preston and, and the rival that we had. We had some classic games, obviously some on your side, the Ricardo Fuller hat trick where you beat us 5-3. Again, might be showing my age, I don't know if you remember that one. Um, the Andy Gray one where he, he scored a, a late header um, against, um, who was that player that you had? Um, that defender, I can't remember him, but he fell on the floor, did Andy Gray, so did this defender, and Andy Gray said something in his ear. Um, there was the one where the 4-3, which you'll probably remember that one, because that's not that long ago, really. Yeah, um, yeah, where yeah. Where you were 3-1 up, got that man sent more. off. Um, quite harshly, to be fair, um, but rules are rules, not time waste. Um, and then Andy Lonergan absolutely lost his shit at the end, giving Vs to the family stand, by the way. It was, yeah, it was giving quite Vs an to the family photo. stand. Quite yeah, an iconic photo. Quite an iconic photo, yeah. And there's yeah, the girl yeah. crying with a program in the away end. That was quite funny. Um, but yeah, like so, some good memories against Preston down years, and obviously some not so good ones. But yourself will have have some good ones. How do you see the Burnley Preston rivalry? Is it is it something that you're quite excited about? Because I, I I love going to Deepdale. Like it's a good ground and a good away end for a start. You're not dicks like Blackman who only say no. You can only take eighteen hundred. You always give us the full end. So it's always always yeah. always always a good away trip and, and some good memories. But how do you, as sort of like a a younger generation of Preston fan, view the rivalry? See, the thing is, um, it, we kind of view Blackburn in the way you sort of viewed us back in the 90s. Yeah. Where we've played we've played them so often and they've not really had you guys to turn to because you've always been better. And we've mm -hmm. kind of had... We, we've, not, we've, not, yeah, we've not really looked to Blackpool either because we've been better than them. Yeah. So us and Blackburn have sort of met in the middle and gone, all right, you'll do for now. And um, but with Burnley, um, personally, I don't feel as big of a hatred towards them. It's really weird. Uh, probably, again, like we we've, we've not played you that often, and I think my last like really good memory of when we played you was when we um, the two 0 win. 
back in 2015. Yeah. Uh, Will Will Keane, Nutmegging, uh, Michael Keane to score, and then uh, I think Joe. Got, no, Daniel Johnson scored. Yeah, Daniel Johnson scored. But um, yeah, no, but I, I, I think there is like a hatred there, but I think that's pretty much um, that's embedded to some of the younger generation, probably for the older lot. And a lot yeah. of North End fans are quite sentimental. They are very like we, they don't forget who the rivals are. Um, but the, for me, I, I've I've kind of always had this really weird respect for Burnley. It's um, it's a really weird, really weird one. I I acknowledge that you're a club that's probably miles above everyone else in Lancashire um, in terms of how you're structured and how you've progressed. You've obviously been in the Premier League, and and uh, meanwhile, us Blackburn, Blackpool, Wigan have just sort and Bolton have just sort of fell down the wayside, but. Obviously, we're a little bit. Well, I mean, us and Blackburn are kind of on that level with each other. But it's been it's a really weird it's a really weird one the Burnley rival with you because um I don't particularly feel like a big hatred for Burnley. It's um it's really again I can't describe why I I can't but I would love to I would absolutely love to beat Burnley. It, I I would love just to stick it to uh to to you lot and like <laughs> and visa and all them lot i would love to stick it up to them lot but um you're kind of too good this is the issue you're kind of too good and we're not very good so it for me it's kind of like if they beat us they beat us if we win brilliant that's yeah. unbelievable so uh i think a lot of the younger generation are kind of yeah like like I'm, I'm not talking for myself here. But a lot of the younger generation have it embedded in them from young when they're young that Burnley, Blackpool, uh, Burnley, Blackburn, Blackpool, Bolton, and Wigan, those are the teams you hate. Burnley, yeah. you might hate a little bit more than say Wigan and Bolton, but Blackburn, Blackpool, and Burnley, they're the teams you must hate. Like you yeah. must hate. But for some reason, I don't feel that. It's really weird. But yeah. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I, I enjoyed some of it down the years, like you said. I, I can understand yourself uh, and other people that may be a bit, little bit younger not having that because you didn't play each other for so long. Uh, we didn't play each other for so long, sorry. Uh, so I do kind of get that. And I do kind of get the feeling that amongst Preston fans at the minute, Blackburn is viewed a little bit higher than us because you played. And they, just, just from looking at certain tweets and stuff and the way that Preston fans will sometimes talk about us compared to Blackburn, which I quite enjoy. If anybody slags them off, I, I'm always like, yeah, I'll join in with that. Happy days. Um, I want to move on to the game then. Uh, you mentioned earlier you have wing-backs that do sometimes play quite high up. I heard that and my ears pricked up thinking, happy days. If you're going to stick some wing-backs high up, we are going to absolutely... I'll say ruin you, but I said that to the Plymouth fan and their wing-backs was quite high up. And we did get in behind them a lot, but the end ball was absolutely atrocious on Tuesday night against Plymouth. If it weren't for the penalty, I genuinely don't think we would have scored in that game and it would have been nil-nil. Fingers crossed we've learned our lesson and the end ball is getting better because we do look like we are improving. There's just always a little something. But my question is, how are you expecting Preston to play? Are you expecting Preston to come at us, stick some wing-backs high up, or are you going to do what some teams have done and just, just part the bus? I think we'll just park the bus, personally. I don't think we'll be quite... We'll put the wing-backs quite high up. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll sit back... Soak up pressure and try to break on the counter. But the thing is, a Scott Parker championship team, you might as well have the Great Wall of China. Genuinely, like that thing is like that. A Scott Parker championship team is quite something to be feared. And um, like I know it from when we played Fulham, they always beat us. I mean, we beat. I think we beat them maybe like once or twice, but they always seem to beat us quite badly. Didn't they beat but, you seven nil once? Was that under Parker? That was Blackburn, and I f yeah, that was, was Blackburn. It? Sorry, <laughs> that was Blackburn. I went to that game. My friend was a Fulham fan. He bought tickets to go into the away end, so I went with him, and I was like, "Brilliant!" I just remember <laughs> I him stuffing someone once. Uh, yeah, ah, oh, brilliant. But no, I think we'll sit back, soak up the pressure, and try to break you on the counter. But a Scott Parker Championship team is not something really you do well against. But um. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, I just again, I think it's another thing where Burnley are far too good for us, and um, yeah, I I think I, I am going for a loss, and yeah. uh, I think you'll probably beat us 
three nil. I'll go for like another three nil. I'm just glad you don't have Nathan Tower. He kind of yeah. Well, this is the problem. Is like, yeah, I mean, he would class that day. And again, I've just just I were I were chuckling to myself when the intro was on because there is the bit where it's like, and that's a yeah. Tower for Nathan. That's from that yeah. game. Um, but yeah, um, it's interesting that you say you feel like a Scott Parker team is to be feared, and we might beat you three nil. I think some Burnley fans might go into that predicting a 3-0. But the problem with Burnley at the minute is it's still a new team. I'm not criticising them. I've been one of the ones who's been trying to defend them. We are second in the league. Everyone needs to remember that. But there's been a few people that are whinging because it's not quite free-flowing like Vincent Company mm. was. We, we struggled against Oxford. We couldn't break them down. It was 0-0. Um, I was the only team this season to shut Oxford out, though, by the way. Um, but, you know, we should be beating teams like Oxford with a no disrespect yeah. to Oxford. Um, um, and against Plymouth, we didn't break them down other than the penalty. We did create a couple of chances, but it weren't clinical enough. And that's the problem with this team at the minute. Yes, we're picking up results. We've only lost the once against Sunderland and there was a lot of extenuating circumstances with the amount of players that we were selling at that point. But we've only lost the once. Um, so it's it's not too bad. But like you said, you might as well have the Great Wall of China in front of you because defensively we have been very, very good. Uh, we've got, in my opinion, the best defender in the league, but pretty much everyone in the top 10 says that. Uh, but Maxime Estebe, in my opinion, is the best defender in the league. He's fantastic. Uh, we've also got Joe Worrell, who's injured. He'll be out for a while with a broken foot. Fingers crossed we have Connor Roberts back this week and Zion Fleming uh, because Zion Fleming might be that missing link up front because we're just missing that creativity. We're just missing that creativity. But he, 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 he's a good he's a good championship number 10, Zion Fleming. Has he done well against you in the past? You could say that, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He loves a goal against us. Um, I, I, I heard Zion Fleming completely forgot that he was there at Burnley. He's, he's, he's not really playing us yet, mate, yeah. I know, but I heard, I, heard, I heard that name and I thought, oh, dear. <laughs> well, Ooh. he's been injured for a while, mate, but he could be back this weekend. So, fingers crossed for us, he is. I'm sure you'll be saying it isn't. I know you've already predicted 3-0, um, but I just want to get it again. What are your predictions for the game, please, mate? 3-0 Burnley. Yeah, 3-0 Burnley. I'm going to I'm gonna go another 1-0. I think we'll win. I think ultimately we'll have too much for you. But I just think at the minute, we're not really clicking up front. The midfield did look better against Plymouth. We moved the ball quicker than what we did against Oxford. But it still probably wasn't creative enough, especially in that second half. You could also caveat that by saying we should have been 3-0 up at half-time. So therefore, we were creating enough chances. But in the second half, the midfield definitely tired. The midfield was a concern, and we allowed Plymouth to step onto us. Um, thankfully, by then, we already had the goal, um, because Scott Parker did make his changes a little late, which I was a little bit concerned about. But we came away with the win. But yeah, I'm expecting something similar, especially if you're going to come and park the bus, because that's what Blackburn did, and that's why they got the result. They got an incredibly fortuitous goal. I, I fully admit it's a great goal, but if he does that a thousand times, again, it ain't going in. So on that, on that, on that situation, it's lucky. Um, we were the better side, but they just sat back. Um, but Jack, we'll wrap it up there. We've got all the predictions in. We've got everything else. It was a good chat. We've hit the half an hour mark. Just, just before we do, can you let everybody know where they can find you and the Butter Pie Pod on social media if they want to digest some pre-game content or some post-game content as well surrounding yeah. the weekend's match? Yeah, you can find us at, on uh, Twitter or X or Instagram at the Butter Pie Pod. Uh, yeah, we are recording this evening actually to have an episode to go out tomorrow morning, and uh, yes, yeah, so you can keep up to date about all the sort of pre game and uh, even some post match stuff, you know, and uh, interact with us as well because my me and me and Oliver we love interacting with people, and it really, you know, yeah, so just find us there, talk to us, yeah, and yeah. Definitely. I recommend it, everybody. Definitely. I do recommend it, especially I'm one of them that if we win, I do like to go on the uh, opposing team's pocket just to see what they say and not to give it the big one um, because I'm not that kind of guy, but just to kind of see what they say. And sometimes even if we get beat, it depends who it is. Probably not Preston. Um, but yeah, Jack, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming on on a Thursday morning straight after um, the night of a big win for yourselves. But good luck for the season. Just have to say <laughs> Thank you very much. Been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Good luck for the season.